Good Vibes Only is here to take you on a journey to discover the weird and wacky world of wellness. It's brought to you by the globally renowned skin and wellness expert, Marie Reynolds, who holds over 36 years of experience within the skin and well-being industry. Each week, Marie shares her own holistic lifestyle hacks and chats to other leading wellness experts to find out their good vibe story, discussing how they deal with day-to-day -day stress, anxiety, sleep, and skin issues. Listen in as Marie explores why, when it comes to our health and wellness, we need to look beyond the linear, question the norm, and think outside the box. Welcome to Good Vibes Only. My name is Marie Reynolds. I've been in the skin and wellness industry for over 35 years. I can't believe how fast that time's gone, but looking back, I can reflect on how much I've studied and learned along the way. I've always had this obsession to keep learning, and it's because I've never believed in a linear approach to health and well-being. You see, we're all programmed to think in this linear approach to health and well-being, especially when it comes to the skin. We're pigeonholed to think of certain conditions, for example, rosacea, acne, eczema or psoriasis, and then we have a very limited approach in how we can deal with it. We're a 3D energetic being that interacts with everything that we eat, every person we speak to, every thought we process, every environment we place ourselves in, even down to our sleep hygiene and obviously our gut health. I always talk about when I speak to clients or when I'm teaching therapists that you always have to lurk from the beginning, from how we chew to how we poo and everything else in between. It's so important. It goes without saying that if you've got any health concerns, you must always go to your GP. But complementary medicine is invaluable. I personally believe that all physical manifestations start energetically. So if we can deal with the energetic imbalance, then I believe that the body can reset and heal itself. Every living thing has an energetic signature and a magnetic field that interacts with every other living organism, even down to pathogens. I always speak of that each and every one of us are born with a toxic bin. Some are born with it quarter full, some half full, and some three quarters full. This is dependent on inherited factors, lifestyle, and environmental factors. I'm a great believer in a little bit of what you fancy does you good. But we're all unique beings, and we all react to certain conditions differently. We also have to realise that you have to take responsibility for your own health and well-being. Think about that toxic bin. If it's quarter full from genetic factors and you're having a poor diet and lifestyle, not sleeping very well, stressing yourself out, looking at how you're dealing with stress, then all of these will build up in that toxic bin. So if you learn about little hacks and little ways in how to reduce that toxic bin, you take them, right? Simple things that you can implement that do not take much time or money, like looking at your sleep hygiene. By this, I don't only mean about how often you clean your sheets, but little hacks thrown in like sprinkling bicarb of soda on the mattress before you remake the bed. Leave it for half an hour and then hoover. This neutralises toxins from the mattress and decreases mites that feed on the skin and cause their own little toxins. It's such a great tip, especially for eczema or psoriasis sufferers. Reducing electro smog in the bedroom is another easy way to cut back on the toxic load. Mobile devices carry their own radio waves, microwaves and gases that we soak in at a time when we're meant to be in a state of rest and repair. This is the time when our brains filter negativity and lay down important information. Remember, we are electrical beings and we also absorb this electro smog. So just by removing these devices from the bedroom and switching off all electrical switches, it will improve your sleep quality. Houseplants are also known to remove electro smog from the environment. Peace lilies are a great one. I actually bought a peace lily for my daughter because she was suffering from nosebleeds. Stop them straight away. You will find that you will wake up with a clearer head and feel the benefits of a good night's sleep, which is so important for overall health. The majority of my work is dealing with energy medicine, frequencies and vibrations that interact in the body. Everything has a vibration. The chair you're sitting on, pen you write with, table you eat off of. But vibrations resonate at different speeds and as human beings we pick up on these vibrations. They can affect how we feel, what we think and how we act. A good example of this is when we listen to music. Soft, gentle music can soothe us into a state of relaxation. Vibrant, upbeat music can make us feel happy and energised. 
and loud screeching headbanging music to some can give you a headache and immediately make you feel tense. Even the air we breathe and the air that surrounds us is charged with electromagnetic energy, which is showered down from the Earth from solar rays and planetary radiation. Human beings act as antenna and pick up on this electromagnetic energy and charge our life force known as chi. Many people know this as earthing. And earthing itself comes from the negative ions that are forced down into the earth from lightning. So when you place bare feet on the ground or when you're by the beach or anywhere in woodland, these negative ions are absorbed by the body, it reduces blood pressure and it increases our antioxidants to fight free radicals. Think about how you feel when you go for a walk in the woods or walk in the park or if you go to the beach. Those negative ions are bombarding us as human beings and we absorb them and it makes us feel so good mentally, emotionally and physically. So how can electromagnetic energy make human beings feel better? We need to stop this linear thinking and think further and wider. Water has a great part to play in this. As newborn babies, we hold 99% of water, which decreases in adulthood to about 70%. It then continues to decrease to about 50% as we age. Planet Earth is covered with about 70% of water, exactly the same ratio as a human being holds. Water can shape landscapes in the form of rivers and streams in its fluid form. And when it freezes, it's the only liquid form that expands when frozen. Ice molecules are less dense than water molecules, explaining why ice floats. Ice appears as icicles, hail, snowflakes and glaciers, and it plays a major role in global climate. Clouds are an accumulation of every minute droplet of water or ice crystals that vaporise and rise into the atmosphere, creating beautiful formations in the sky. So when you think about water, what is the image that you conjure up? Is it a waterfall where the water cascades over a natural rock formation, spraying and tumbling down to the stream below? Or is it in the form of a still lake that can bring calmness and peace within? What about wild, crashing, turbulent waves that make you feel so alive? Even the sound of the power of the Earth's fury when the connection of the rolling crest falls upon the rocks on the beach can energise you. The fact is, water can bring about destruction with its anger and fury. Tsunami waves bring about devastation, killing innocents and ravishing coastlines. Just as it brings terror, it can also bring about tranquility and relaxation. With gentle trickling streams, still waters with the horizon hovering over the sea line, even the sound of the gentle trickle of raindrops can ease away the daily stresses. In energy medicine, we always talk about that water has memory. It remembers information. Water is a liquid crystal and can, when frozen, remember its crystal structure exactly. We know that every single snowflake has its own identity. If you defrosted a snowflake and then refroze it, the water molecule would reform in exactly the same geometric crystalline structure. Information travels through water. It's a vehicle that transports the information to its destination. Homeopathy works in this way. Water picks up the vibration from the remedy and carries that information to the living cell. Homeopathy in its strongest strength has almost nothing left of the original remedy. But how can it work? The water that has been succussed with the original blend has gained strength in the vibration and the information as the process goes on. Japanese scientist Mizuro Emoto performed experiments on water. His book Messages in Water is a must read. Emoto's experiments included him speaking words of kindness and gratitude to natural spring water and documenting the molecules from the words he spoke. He found the most beautiful crystalline formations in the water molecule, almost celestial. He performed the experiment again with the same water, but saying negative words. And the water molecule was unable to form crystalline shape. Instead, it distorted dark forms. His experiment with rice in spring water was another interesting one. He placed three glasses of water with the same amount of rice in each. He spoke positive words to one, negative to another, and completely ignored the final glass. What transpired was incredible. The positive words produced white fluffy rice. The negative words, the rice had developed brown spots. And the rice that was ignored was black and rancid. 
Now, you may wonder why I'm talking about Emoto and water. Well, the simple reason is coming back to the human body is made mostly of water. Negative and positive actions, sounds and experience, not only from us, but from others, have a profound effect to us as human beings, to our mental and our physical well-being. We are made up of millions of atoms that have both positive and negative electrons spinning around them. And when negative words, actions or thoughts invade us, it creates a catalyst within those atoms that can cause it to go into an overdrive and thus causing an imbalance within your body. Information is then imprinted upon our body fluids, our water. Remember, we are 70% water and water remembers. Have you ever heard of these sayings? You're your own worst enemy. Hear no evil, speak no evil and see no evil. Words can be poison or fruit. Basically, the only person you hurt is yourself when you take on board negativity. Think about the experiences that you may have had if somebody being in the same room as you, literally lighting it up with their presence. They're the life and soul of the party. These are the people that are on our wavelength and they can motivate us with their positivity. There may be other times when someone has walked into the room and you could literally cut the atmosphere with a knife. They emit negative energy. They can drain you. These type of people I call emotional vampires. And these can even be members of your family or dear friends. These are people that literally drain your energy. How you accept stressful situations can make or break you. There is a saying that the only difference between bitter and better is the letter I. It is only I that can make a difference. I can change from a victim to a procreator. We are in control of our thoughts, actions and emotions. Whatever we do, say or think will have an impact on our physical being. Chain reactions within the body happen as soon as negativity hits. This can be in the form of stress from environmental factors, emotional factors or physical factors. But the only difference is how we choose to accept these situations. We may not be in control of the things that affect us, but we can control the effect they have on us. We have to try to get into the habit of taking positives out of a negative situation. Easier said than done at times. But remember, even the precious metals have to go through various boiling points to get to its purest form. We are what we are from what we experience, but they help us judge situations. They help us judge people and environments, but only if we understand that we have to learn from each experience and not increase the negativity within. Part of the reason why I wanted to start this podcast was so that I could share the hacks and information that I have gathered over the 35 years in my field. I'll be joined by my friends and colleagues where we'll be discussing certain topics and Hopefully, making you think outside the box to understand that if you have a specific skin condition like rosacea, it's not necessarily because of the products that you're using or just hormones. It's how hormones are traveling through the body and metabolizing through the body. It's about what times you're eating and what you're eating. There's so many different factors. So we'll be sharing lots of different gems and nuggets of information that can possibly give you an insight of I'll also be joined by some of my amazing clients who I deem as dear friends who have been with me for many, many years and sharing their success stories of their wellness journey. Thank you for listening and please subscribe so that you can follow us for the episodes that follow. That's it for this week's Good Vibes Only episode. But there's plenty more wholesome, holistic information where that came from. Check out Marie's website, www.mariereynoldslondon.com or follow Marie on socials. For Marie's products, follow at Marie Reynolds London on Instagram and Facebook and at Marie Reynolds underscore London on TikTok. You can also follow Marie's day-to-day -day content on Instagram. Follow at Marie Reynolds underscore M-R-L. Thank you so much for listening to Good Vibes Only. If you've enjoyed this episode, we'd love for you to subscribe to and review the podcast wherever you listen to them. And remember to share the episode too. See you next time.